there are quite a few corrections required in the introduction. First of all, I am just a senior learner of English, right? Because every day we come across so many things and we keep learning. And sometimes we are surprised, sometimes we are shocked, and sometimes we don't know what to say, right? So today I am not here to probably teach anything, but just to share some of my struggles, some of my premises, some of my experiences. And I don't know whether you all the participants are in the same room or are they on their own individual laptops or mobiles. Can you give me some idea about that? Yes, sir. We are at home as of okay. now at our okay. respective homes. So right. we had a session at the school, then we are home now. So we are in okay. our homes with our laptop and mobiles. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. So uh, why I asked you because I'm going to give you some tasks and it is always yes. good to do tasks individually. So yes. when you are not together in your staff room or somewhere at your school, then it is good. Fine. And let me make it very clear that uh, today's session will probably be the beginning of our association because it is impossible to know either the speaker or the participants in just one session. So we will just be introduced to each other in a particular way. And after that, if you feel like we will have a long term association via all the modern means of communication, because I use everything that is available, Facebook and Instagram and WhatsApp and LinkedIn and you name it. So I'll be happy if you can have a long term association after this session. And with your permission, I'll start sharing my presentation. Sure, sir. Yeah. I haven't used this particular platform, Teams. Yes, sir. Uh, so you will find a small share. Uh, yeah, I will share my screen. Yeah. So I'm just trying to do it. If you if you can see my screen, you can let me know. Yes, yes, sir. it's visible, sir. Very much. Visible. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Now, uh, right from the beginning, friends, let me make it clear that if there is any technical problem, don't worry. I will connect using my other devices. I have a laptop, a, des a desktop, and as well as my mobile. So everything is ready. So in case there is a disconnection, don't worry. I'll try to reconnect using whichever device available. Right. And I believe you have a pen or paper or pencil, something to uh, write. Now write what? Whatever thoughts, whatever ideas that come to you, whatever queries that you have, please don't wait for the last you know, QA session. You can stop me. You can ask me. You can challenge me, you can argue with me, right? So don't hesitate. And I know it is a little uh, difficult uh, time of day after lunch, but still we'll try to make the most of it. The topic today is very broad in nature, fluency, accuracy, and appropriateness. So let's begin. And can I request at least one participant to unmute and say something to make sure that I am able to hear participants as well? Yes, sir. We are able to hear you. Great. Say. Thank you so Thank much, you. sir. Thank you. Lovely. Yeah, because you know, in one of the sessions in one of the schools, uh, it so happened that I kept on speaking because I was not able to see the participants. So I kept on speaking, speaking, speaking. And after about 10 minutes, somebody called me saying that, sir, please be online. I said, what have you been doing? I've been online for 10 minutes. So I don't want that to happen here. So thank you for that confirmation. Now let's begin. And by the way, there is no syllabus to cover. So please feel free to stop me and interact whenever you feel like any one of you, right? So I usually begin my session with 
blessings of my teachers, my gurus. Uh, unfortunately, I lost my guru, Dr. Sudhakar Marathe, just a month ago. And Mrs. Marathe, right now, she is in Pune. I am indebted to them for whatever I have done in my life, academically as well as personally. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, the school, the the team who invited me will be together for two hours, hopefully. And uh, there are lots of activities. So please take part in activities. Our goals are the same. I want to learn something from you and probably you will get something from me in terms of ELT, English language teaching. Now I would like to begin by asking you to speak. So uh, I don't know the coordinator's name, the person who introduced me. What's your name, please? The person who began the session? Uh, so it's me, Shimna. Uh, Simna, okay, Simna. Uh, yes. I would like you to, you know, help me. Yes, sir. Uh, say the first help I need is you can tell anyone from your team to speak these words. Say first row one person, second row another person. Okay. Because right now there is, I don't see any participants on my screen. So you will have to do that task for me. Thank you. Yeah. So can we, uh, so do you need separate people? One, one person? Yes, say? yes, yes. Different people? Yes, yes. Yeah. So can we start from the primary teachers? Like we can start with Shalini. Shalini, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Rosalind, ma'am. Pinkle, ma'am. Please be ready. Oh, okay, ma'am. So I would like you to speak the words which are on the screen one by one. Language specific. Okay, Rosalyn, ma'am, you carry on, you carry on. You carry on. Okay, okay. Yeah, we can do like this. Uh, Rosalyn, ma'am, can speak the first line. The second line, Shalini, ma'am. Third line, Pinkle, ma'am. Fourth line, Neetu Singh, ma'am. Uh, fifth line, Joya, ma'am, are you there with us? Yes, yes, very much there. Yeah. Yeah, Joya ma'am, fifth line, sixth line, uh, Rubina ma'am, seventh line, Rajrupa ma'am. Is that okay? Okay ma'am. Yeah, Bye. done. So we go. Sure, yeah, good sure. to go, yes. Okay. Yeah, Rosalind so ma'am, start. Okay. I'm going to just read the first line. First line, language, specific, information, engineer. Uh, Shalini here. Uh, pronoun, a pronunciation, gross, carrier, belief. Single man. Third one, Bury, develop, systematic, university, academic. Uh, Shimna ma'am, will you give me uh, one minute more, please? Yeah, uh, maybe after this activity. Uh, okay, okay, oh, fine, fine. You want to say something? Uh, yes. Yeah, let me uh, finish this activity. Like something to Dharmesh, Dharmendra, sir. sir yeah, as as the, yeah, as soon as the first round is over, we'll discuss. Okay, okay, sir. Good afternoon. Neetu Singh here. Good afternoon, sir. The fourth line, Recept, Gigantic Semester Technology. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, ma uh, yes, sir. Good day, sir. Psychology generate fantastic photographer. Uh, Rubina, ma'am. Yeah. Anonymous academician souvenir oven. Yeah. And Rajrupa, ma'am. Good afternoon. Cook. Envy, facade, champagne, dais, eerie. Okay, thank you so much. And now somebody wanted to ask something. Please go ahead. Yeah, Pinkle Man. 
Uh, yes, sir. I didn't want to ask anything, but um, actually, I am your student, sir. When oh, you had really? a class in uh, Nanpara, do you remember that, sir? Okay, okay. So, <laughs> yes. So right. in this way, you are my guru. So good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. We are all learners, co-learners. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Right. Lovely. Okay. The person who spoke last. Can I know that person's name? Rajrupa, ma'am. Yeah, Raj one. Rupa. Yes. So congratulations. It seems that you spent quite a quite a lot of time in uh, probably listening to good quality English because ultimately language learning happens only when you listen to a lot of good quality English, right? Yes, so the Thank seventh you, line seventh line was actually a challenge. And uh, <laughs> normally uh, people find it difficult to pronounce the last line. Uh, you know why I took that? Because I just wanted to know what kind of English we want to teach our students. You know, when I was a student, uh, sorry, when I went to a school for my children, I normally used to ask teachers just out of curiosity, what kind of English do you teach? And mostly the answers were vague because probably it was not even thought that there are different kinds of English is possible, right? But because we are in teaching profession, I believe most of you are teachers of English, right? Or if not now, then in the future, probably you would stick to a particular language and you would teach English. So when you teach English, then probably it is good to have a particular kind of English as a model for yourself so that via you, your students can also pick up a particular kind of English. Now, when I say kinds of English, uh, somebody might say I teach Indian English or I speak Indian English. Now, unfortunately, we do not have a recorded standardized Indian variety of English. I'm sure you know that in Surat, if you go to four different parts, you will have four different varieties of English, right? The same thing will happen in uh, every part of India. I think some people are waiting in the lobby, so we have to allow them. I don't know. Uh, no. Yes, sir. We will do that. Yeah. Okay, fine. Yes. So um, <clears throat> right from the beginning, let me make it clear that for this particular session, we will stick to the standard British variety of English, which is called RP, Received Pronunciation. Why have I selected this? Because in most countries where English is the second or third or foreign language, RP is the model. And fortunately, we have a lot of material available online as well as offline for RP. For example, if you look up in any dictionary, let me show it to you my screen. I have opened this particular dictionary, say Cambridge, right? So when you look up in any dictionary, you will have two pronunciations, the first UK and the second US. Now, again, in the UK, there may be more than 100 varieties of English. So out of those hundreds of varieties, Dictionary makers and all materials producers generally stick to the standard British variety of English. So when you uh, listen to any pronunciation in any, any dictionary, the UK version, it is RP. So that we will stick to for this particular session. However, I do not. Uh, I cannot actually ask anyone to stick to British English only. You may choose American, the, 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 the kind of English which is spoken in the educated circles in the US. That is called GA, General American. So you, it may be your choice. You can go for GA or you may like, say, Australian English. It's your choice. But what is important is to stick to a particular variety that you've chosen then only your brain will be able to process incoming data and form certain rules of speech. Otherwise, it will not be possible. 
For example, if you hear a word like say information, if you hear this word from five different people, they will all speak differently. Like some might say information, some will say information, some will say information, and in Surat you might hear sir in place of sh, information, right? So you will have all varieties of English. So in such a situation, your brain will not be able to form any impression, right? And unless and until words are etched on your memory, you will not be able to use them the way they should be used. So I uh, generally recommend listening to the same kind of English over a long period of time so that speech patterns are formed, right? So when you speak, you don't have to think about where to stress, what sound to use. It happens automatically, right? So uh, I would, uh, I forget the name. I'm very poor at remembering names. Uh, Seema or what? Uh, the person Shimna. Who so you can Shimna. remember Shimla. Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Quite. <laughs> yeah. So Shimla. Simna. Simna. Okay. Simna. Yeah. Simna, can you tell any one participant to speak after me these words? I will speak the word and I would like that person to repeat. Yeah. Can we have Nitu Singh, ma'am? Nitu Singh, ma'am? Yes, ma'am. Or. Uh, yeah, I need to sing. Yeah. So what I'll do, I'll speak the words and you try to copy. OK, and others will see how the words are different from what. Some of the participants spoke, right? So you just blindly copy. You are helping others. OK, shall I start? Sure, sir. Yeah, language. Language. Specific. Specific. Now here you have to listen to it very carefully. It is P, then C, and then fig. And out of these three, P, C, and fig, these three are syllables actually. So out of these three syllables, we stress the middle Excuse one me, in this uh, particular. Actually, your voice is cracking. Oh, is that so? Maybe from my sides. Uh, no, sir. I think slight uh, disturbance in the internet, sir. Maybe it's okay. connectivity. Mm. At times, it uh, at there times, is okay. a slight. At times, so it's so. not always, but sometimes. No, not it's always. Not. At times, there is a slight gap in the. Okay. Uh, that's a little surprising, but anyway, because I have a, a special, separate connection. Let me check it once again. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, it shows OK, no problem. OK, so the word is. In three parts and these three parts are called syllables. So in English, in every word, there is a fixed syllable which is stressed. We call it primary stress. And in all dictionaries, it is clearly given with a stress mark. So when you look up any word in a dictionary, you look at that stress mark. Where is it? And after the stress mark, whatever is the syllable that is spoken loudly or differently. So this particular word is specific. Uh Second syllable is stressed. Yes, correct. OK. The next word is information. Information. So here may is stressed. Information. Information. Engineer. I could not hear, sir. Engineer. 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 So here near is stressed, right? Now somebody else can try now. Pronounce. Can we have um, anyone from Subjinder? Uh, ma'am, would you like to try? If you are there. Yes, ma'am, sure, I'll try. Yeah. Pronounce. Yeah. 
pardon please sir repeat again pronounce 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 pronunciation pronunciation gross 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 now you must have uh, heard a lot of people saying gross like gross yes. salary and uh, net hmm. salary right yes, so uh, one of the keys of language learning is you listen to good users of english and find out words which are spoken differently for example the moment i listen to some native speaker or some good user of english in india and if i feel that this is not the way i speak then first of all i look up in a dictionary and then i find out whether it is my problem or somebody's problem right so gross has o sound like no show go so gross okay the next word which is very important for all of us who are in education field uh most indians would speak this word as career but actually it is career career yeah why because career is something that you have in your vehicles for example where you keep your luggage right or carrier bags that you use while shopping so career is different from career career so sometimes somebody uh, some you know students they come to me and they ask me and they say i am worried about my career i said what have you put some luggage there is it outside on the road or where with your vehicle they said no 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 i am worried about what i will do in the future and where will i get a job and what will i do so i said you are actually worried about your career right so why is it important because the change in pronunciation might cause problems of comprehension you may say something and the listener might understand something else and that's why pronunciation is important it is not to show off it is not to you know impress somebody it is purely for intelligibility right that's what i keep telling myself and others the next is believe believe okay uh now i will speak all the remaining words very quickly so that we have time for some other activities but you personally all of you notice how the words are spoken and i'm going to leave this presentation with you so after the session is over maybe next week when you are free you can try to look up these words in dictionaries and try to pronounce them the way they should be pronounced Okay so the uh, from the third uh, row i'll start speaking berry develop systematic university academic receipt gigantic semester technology psychology generate fantastic photographer anonymous academician souvenir oven who on we now this last line is a real real challenge for anyone right unless you have heard these words or seen these words in dictionaries it will obviously be difficult because in english as you know there is no one to one correspondence between the letter and the sound in indian languages that is not the case for example if you take gujarati or hindi or marathi ka is always ka whether it is katar or karvat or kabutar ka is always ka whereas in english as you know any letter can have any sound if you take the letter t it may have the sound t as in teach sh as in nation ch as in nature and in listen it disappears silent 
right? So because there is no one to one correspondence between the letter and the sound, we find it difficult and we have to either hear it from somewhere or look up in a dictionary with phonemic transcription. So for example, uh, the second word in the seventh line, E N N U I. Now no amount of your general knowledge will help you to pronounce this word, right? It is on V. So either you know it or you don't know it. That's it. So I normally tell teachers that English language study is basically a matter of information. How much information you have, how much information you can retain and how much information you can use in your normal, natural, spontaneous language. Right? So coup, ennui, facade. Now many of these words have French uh, origin. That's why they might have different pronunciations. Uh, I, I know uh, an incident when one of the students from a Gujarati medium school, he once came to me and he showed me a, a write up. And he said, in Gujarati, he asked me, what is this word, Champagni? So I said, Champagni, I have never heard that word in my life so far. So I said, show it to me, please. So I checked it and it was champagne. Now that poor guy, how will he be able to understand that it is champagne, right? So English is strange. We have to be very sympathetic with our learners. Then second last, days. Many people uh, on the stage, they speak like dais, members on the dais. No, it is days and eerie. Okay, so that was a quick round of uh, pronunciation. There are hundreds of things that we can discuss, but I'll just touch upon uh, four things later on if, the time, if time permits. In your pronunciation study, personal study, I'm not talking about teaching, I'm talking about your own personal study. So in your personal study, you can talk, you can learn four things if you want to improve your pronunciation. Sounds, word stress, rhythm, intonation. I'll repeat. Your personal study of pronunciation should include four areas. Number one, sounds. Number two, word stress. Number three, rhythm. And number four, intonation. If time permits, we'll discuss these at the end towards the end, yeah. Any uh, question, any comment, any suggestion from anyone? Please feel free to share your views, opinions, ideas. It's very clear, sir, and it's going well, sir. Okay. okay. Yeah. We are enjoying, oh. sir. We are oh. enjoying. We all are with you. Great. Thank you so much. Uh, excuse me, sir. One question I would like to ask. Please go ahead. So, uh, is it that the stress um, also it depends upon um, uh, the vowels? Now, in English, if you make a list of word stress then there'll be about uh, 100. Now out of 100, you know, rules, if you master just 15 basic rules of word stress, that's also enough to begin a real study of word stress. Let me give you an example. Think about a verb which can be converted into a noun using T-I-O-N. For example, inform and information, right? Yes. 
Now you give me any other word which can be converted into a noun using T I O N. Any verb. Anyone, anyone can give me. So pronouns, pronunciation. Okay. So, yeah, so pronounce is a verb and from that pronunciation, right? Now, whenever this particular thing happens, that means you convert a verb into a noun using T I O N, then the word stress rule says that you have to stress whatever syllable is there before shun. <coughs> Sorry. Okay. Whatever syllable you have before shun, that is stress. Now that is a rule. Now you think of any okay. word like reservation, preparation, declaration. Now you can give me words. Creation. Communication. Communication. Creation. Anyone else? Creation. Imagination. Yes. Imagination. Creation. Declaration. Declaration. Information. Information. So you must have noticed that sometimes the verb has E sound like declare, so D sound. And when you make a noun out of it, it becomes declaration. So D becomes de. So such changes might happen. Reserve, reservation, prepare, preparation, right? But the word stress rule for shun is you have to speak whatever is before shun loudly, right? Let me give you another rule. Say, based on the words that we have on the screen, so the last word in the fourth and the first word in the fifth line. There also the rule is. Before logic, whatever is the syllable that is spoken loudly. So now you know technology. And what about the next word? Psychology. Ah, now speak call Psychology. louder. Psychology. 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 Yes. Psychology. Now you think about any word where ology is used. It will have the same pattern. Biology, graphology, ornithology, eschatology. Right? So after you master a couple of rules, it becomes a habit. Your brain is actually an amazing tool. For language learning, we call it LAD, Language Acquisition Device. If you want to know more about it, you can refer to Noam Chomsky's material on uh, language acquisition. Yes, yes. Sir. LAD, Language Acquisition Device. So every human child, every normal human child is born with that device which is called LAD, L-A-D, right? But that device will work only when you provide the same kind of input for an extended period of time. For example, if you listen to say BBC for 10 days intensively for four or five hours, and if you notice your own pronunciation, it will invariably change, no doubt about it. Because your brain is an extremely receptive device, but it needs the same kind of input. So if you listen to information, 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 information five times in normal, natural, spontaneous, connected speech, it will be etched on your memory permanently. So next time when you speak, you don't have to think about where to stress or what sound to use. It becomes automatic. Right? How did I say the word automatic? So automatic, if you can speak that, you can definitely speak the word, the third word in the third line. What is that? Systematic. Word? Exactly. Right. 
so words uh, if you master just a few words then they will help you to pronounce new words right okay so uh, any other question any suggestion idea thought Uh, sir, just a thought, sir. Uh, Please not go ahead. thought. Actually, it's a doubt, sir. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm Shimna. Uh, so, sir, this doubt is: we being the native speakers of English, sir, what do you think, sir? How much important, or we do understand, it's fundamental to speak with correct pronunciation. It's very much fundamental. It's very important, very significant. Uh, but when our children come from various regions, you no, know, uh, we have a Punjabi student, we have a student from Gujarat, we have a student from Maharashtra. So they come from, they come with their own set of uh, pronunciation. Uh, so how much important it is to pay attention to these pronunciations and correct it in the classroom, or uh, at times can we just overlook these, uh, uh, this important aspect? A very good question and it is I'm sure you know that this question is asked to me every time I talk about pronunciation, right? So uh, you rightly said that people in your classroom, students in your classroom, they are from different backgrounds. That's all the more reason. To draw their attention to correct pronunciation and it is not for and by the way, we are non native speakers of English. Yeah, yes, yes, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. correct. So uh, for us as non-native speakers of English, even within India, we have so much of variety that if you don't stick to standard English, it will be difficult to communicate effectively. And you know, uh, uh, if you, if I can say something off the record, there are so many you know, extremely good users of English in India. But if I, you know, when I talk to them, they say pronunciation is not important. Even some senior teachers of English, professors of English, when I talk to them, they say pronunciation is not important. Intel, uh, you know, communication is important. But then I tell them that to what extent can you dilute? And what about teachers? Teachers have to present a good model because outside they are not going to get good models. For example, you think about a child in my area. I live in Adha Janpal area. Now in my area, out of 1,999 people will say carrier. So my child will definitely listen to carrier only in place of career. Right. Yes, so where where will that child learn correct English? Only when that child comes to you. Only when you present the right model, right? So as teachers of English, our responsibility is much more than teachers of other language, other subjects. Right. And you don't have to correct them all the time. You know, if you present a good model, your students will automatically acquire. And if you are lucky and if you can form a group of teachers like science, maths, physics, all the teachers, suppose you form a group and then you decide to present the, you know, the best quality language possible, then you can do wonders. You know, there are some schools. Yeah, in some schools, when I go to a school, you know, within five minutes, you can come to know the language culture of that school. Right. So if two, three teachers are interested, they can change the entire language culture of the school. And I strongly recommend doing that because. As I said, outside our students, poor students will never ever get an opportunity to listen to normal, natural, spontaneous, good quality English. Uh, you will be surprised to find uh, or rather shocked to find that one of the senior professors of English uh, once he asked me at a conference. Uh, I, I think this is being recorded, so I should not <laughs> name anyone or not even name the university or conference. 
but a person asked me, Bart is your name? Bart is your name? Now, as far as communication is concerned, it is 100% successful. He spoke something, I understood it. But will that be a good model for your students? Obviously not, right? So, uh, uh, by the way, the person who asked me this question, your own pronunciation is extremely good. So your students are lucky. Thank you so much, sir. Yeah. I take it as a compliment. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so now we uh, can we move to the second part? Sure, sir. From speech, we will now move to the you know, second part, which is teachers favorite. And students hate it. But we as teachers, we have to pay attention to that. And what part is that? Any guesses? Writing. Uh, Spelling. Uh, Spelling. Grammar. Spelling, sir. Gram <laughs> Grammar. Teacher. Right. Teachers love and students hate because teachers yes. know, students don't know. And teachers are sometimes so happy when students are wrong because they get a chance to correct. Anyway, uh, just for fun, I hope you have a piece of paper and a pen with you. Yes, sir. So on the screen, you have eight sentences. Now, these are sentences written by students or spoken by students, right? And you have to give them feedback. The students are asking you whether this sentence is right or wrong. And if you are not sure, you can ignore that as well, right? I am very kind. I am not a hard taskmaster. So you can put the right mark or wrong mark or a question mark. It's up to you. I give you uh, five minutes. Okay. Okay, sir. Yeah. You can write numbers one to eight on a piece of paper and write or wrong or question mark and wherever you put a wrong mark you will have to correct it okay you can't just say this is wrong
के लास्ट वन मिनट Okay, shall we discuss these sentences? Uh, yes, sir. Lovely. Okay, now <clears throat> the platform is open. Anyone can give feedback on any of the sentences that you feel like. Teachers can raise their hands, please, so we can call out the names. We have Hiren, sir. Please go ahead. Hiren, sir. Yes. Uh, uh, in my opinion, the first sentence is wrong. It should be we all have dictionaries. Actually, uh, when we are talking about possession, uh, possession, there should be a simple tense and uh, action. action. Uh, while we are using uh, yes, present tense, uh, it means there should be some action. Yes. But it is a matter of possession, so it, there should be simple tense. Very good. Very good. Now, can you tell me some other categories of verbs where we don't use this ing form? Uh, sir, all the verbs where seem, we have seem. perception. Very good. Like so, love. verbs of verbs of perception, perception. like, like see, smell, taste here, then verbs of possession like have, belong to, contain, consist. Yeah, good. And verbs related to mental states also. Somebody mentioned that love, yeah, hate, agree, I agree with you, I believe in God. So as uh, Hiran rightly mentioned, these are basically state verbs, not action words, right? And that's why we, we don't use an ing form. So we have a dictionary, that's fine. Yeah. What about the second sentence? Anyone? Yes, sir, may I? Uh, same person or some other person? Same person, sir. Uh, if possible, let's give a chance to some other person. Sir, can I try? Yeah, please go ahead. Uh, sir, the, uh, the second sentence, I do not know the technical part, sir. Mm. Just, uh, I'm not an English person, so, uh, According to me, according to me, this is not acceptable. Anyone else? May I, sir? Hiran? Yes, sir. Hiran, wait for a minute. I know you know the answer. Uh, let somebody else try. Simna, can you see if somebody raises the hand? I don't know because I on my screen I don't see anything. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm seeing it. Uh, actually, okay. sir, it's only Hiran sir who has raised his hand. Okay, Hiran, go ahead. Sir, uh, according to me is a wrong use of English. It should be in my opinion. Yes. Any other option? Okay. As my so view. as as uh, Hiran mentioned rightly. According to is always used for others' opinions. For example, according to my teacher, according to the latest news, according to the Bible, the Quran, the Gita. So according to is used for others' opinions. We do not use it for me or us. So for that, we can say to my mind, in my opinion, in my view, right? These are the three common ones. I'm sure there are many more. Okay, what about the third one? Anyone would like to try? Pinkle, ma'am, yes. Uh, I think so. 
yeah. is a grammar language. Um, we always use. Uh, uh, we cannot write cannot separately. So, Excellent. is it a fault here? Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. You know, English is such a strange language. Should and not, you can write as two words. May and not, you can write. Might and not, fine. So all other modal auxiliaries, you can write as two words, but cannot is written as one word. Now you can ask me why. Why, sir? Because English is English. <laughs> <laughs> there is no logic at all. Cannot is written as one word, so we have to use it as one word. That's it. There is no logic at all. Right. But you know, some of the students, when they appear for some examinations like IELTS or TOEFL or maybe some advanced level CAE examination, at that time, accuracy becomes, you know, it takes an important, if it plays an important role. Even in writing, uh, sometimes, you know, when you write an email or a WhatsApp message, people take it very lightly. No, you have to take extreme care when you send any message from your side because your WhatsApp message is your representative. Your email is your representative there. They are going to judge you on the basis of what they see on the screen. And there you don't have the facility that you have in speaking. While speaking, you can raise the volume, lower the volume, change the pitch, change the tone. Whereas in writing, you don't have that opportunity. So there it becomes more important to be accurate and you have to uh, you know, create an impression, positive impression in the reader's mind. So such small things will help a lot. There are thousands of such things. We call them nuances of the English language. There are so many. A minor difference in spelling, in pronunciation, in grammatical structure, and a huge change in the meaning, right? And that's why we are lucky, actually. We teachers of English are lucky that every day we, we can, you know, learn so much and enjoy our life, right? Okay, for, fourth one. So may I try, sir? Yeah, please. So, please. Uh, I yeah, look please. forward to meet you soon is the sentence given here, sir. To meet is an infinitive. I think there has to be a noun there. So I look forward to meeting you soon. So absolutely gerund, correct. Uh, gerund, I think there has to be a gerund. Absolutely, absolutely. Look forward to is always followed by the ing form of the verb. Apart from look forward to, there are quite a few other expressions. They are always followed by the ing form. For example, I couldn't help laughing. Right? Somebody uh, at a at a party, at a wedding party, for example, somebody was trying to sit there, sit in a chair, and some other person pulled the chair, and that person fell on the ground, and I couldn't help laughing. <coughs> May I add something, sir? Please. Sir, in the same way, stop and start also takes ing. I could not stop crying. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. But you know, there are uh, Keep, there are lots should. of challenges here. There are lots of challenges for learners. If you take English words and expressions and try to identify the patterns for two plus verb or the ing form, there are so many. Let me give an example. Certain verbs in English, they are always followed by two plus verb when there are two verbs. For example, I want to play cricket. So after want, you will use to play. You will not say I want playing cricket. No, I want to play. So certain verbs follow this two plus verb category. Certain other verbs, they follow the ing category. For example, suggest. I suggest buying a good dictionary. Please consider selling this house. I enjoy meeting friends. So enjoy, consider, uh, mind. So there are quite a few verbs which are followed by the ing form. These two principal categories, one with two plus verb, second with the ing form. Now third category, 
In the third category, you can use either two plus verb or the ing form without any change in the meaning. For example, I love to dance and I love dancing. Both are possible. Then fourth category. Here also either two plus verb or the ing possible, but with different meanings. For example, uh, stop verb. I stopped talking. And I stopped to talk. They are absolutely different. When you say I stopped talking, that means you are already talking and you saw something or you met somebody and you stopped talking. And the other sentence, suppose you are going somewhere and you saw a friend on the other side, you, so you stopped. Why? Because you wanted to talk. Right? So uh, that is the fourth category. In the fifth category, you have expressions like look forward to, can't help, feel like, like I don't feel like eating anything today. Right? So English gives you lots of uh, challenges. But anyway, please remember this sentence. Look forward to is always followed by the ing form. At the end of your mail, sometimes you need that. I look forward to serving you. When you apply, for example, somewhere, I look forward to getting an interview call. In business English, they use I, I look forward to getting an order from you or I look forward to serving you. Lovely. Next. So spectacle hmm. never comes in singular. So our article will not be used. What uh, a nice spectacle is wrong, sir? Because spectacle always comes in pairs. So spectacle word is it doesn't exist in English. It's uh, spectacles always. Any other comment? Anyone? Uh, okay. If we add, excuse me, sir. What yeah, a please. nice uh, spectacle. This, it, this spectacle is not that spectacle. Mm. <laughs> whether the, sir, whether the spectacle is used for some sight or scene. OK, now let me. Uh, Say something. Uh, somebody said spectacle. We can add. Okay, we can add a verb. And sir, a is it possible subject. to say? Is it possible? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, please raise your I just wanted features. to say. Usually, you, usually, sir, when we uh, uh, read this, uh, we can also say the same thing. What a nice spectacle it was. Mm -hmm. Is it uh, like, you know, when we convert it to the reported speech or we just try to recall? So adding that, you know, it was or it is uh, to make it with the, if we are defining spectacle as, you know, uh, some sort of view or a scenic uh, beauty kind of. So is it uh, possible? Yeah. OK, now. Uh, the first point is. As somebody rightly mentioned that there are certain words in English, they are always in plural because they are in pairs. And if they are individual, they lose their existence, right? So in that sense, glasses, spectacles, trousers, shorts, pajamas, pants, jeans, the binoculars, uh, pincers, so these words Caesar. are generally uh, scissors. Yes, <laughs> scissors. So certain things which are in pairs. And if you remove one part, it loses its existence. So in that sense, spectacles, for example, what are these? These are spectacles, right? That is OK. But here the word is not spectacles. It is the singular word spectacle, which means a view. So what a nice spectacle means it was I'm sure that spectacle was good. That's why somebody was saying what a nice spectacle. So what a nice spectacle is perfectly acceptable. When the meaning of spectacle is view. Right. And as somebody mentioned, if you want to make a complete sentence, then what a nice spectacle it was or what a nice spectacle it is, we can say. But what a nice spectacle itself is also enough as an exclamation. 
produce a what a lovely shot. Right? Yeah, in cricket, true. what a lovely shot. So in that sense, it is OK. So the fifth sentence is perfectly acceptable in English. OK. Sixth. So may I? Please go ahead. So uh, over here, I would like to go for that she's learning music for three years because the time is not if it is if I wish to use since. So then I have to tell since last three years, then it will be uh, three years. Otherwise, we have to say that she's learning music for three for three years. Like anyone else? Sir, she English. has been learning music. She has been learning music for three years. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> because the now, precise time is given to her, sir. So uh -huh. she has been learning. So there are two serious problems of language here. One, since is used with the beginning point, and for is used for a period of time. So this is one of the you know commonest rules of the English language. Yes. Since with a point of time, like since morning, since uh, two o'clock, since yes. you came, since independence, since birth. So since with a beginning point, and for for a period of time, for ten days, for a long time, for several decades. It may be long, it may be a, a big period of time or a short, it doesn't matter. For 10 seconds, for microseconds, right? For ages. So that is one problem, right? In place of since we require for. And second major problem, which is more probably serious, is in English, M is an R usually refer to the present point of time. For example, I am talking, I am communicating with you, so it is present time. But if I want to say anything from past to present, the concept is called past to present. Whether it is a situation or it is an action, we require has or have followed by being. So uh, the correct sentence here will be, she has been learning music Same for three years. The present perfect continuous tense. But even if it is not a continuous action, if it is just a situation, then also the rule is the same. For example, suppose somebody phones and asks me, hey, Dharmendra, let's go and have a cup of tea. And I say, no, 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 I'm busy now. So when I say I'm busy, I'm referring to the present point only. But suppose I want to tell that person about my situation from past to present, then I will say I have been busy since two o'clock. So I am busy now, but I have been busy since two o'clock or I have been busy for an hour. So the concept is very simple past to present. Continuity or a situation requires has been or have been. That's it. Right now another point. Somebody use the word last. Now remember whenever you use the word last, you require the before that. So for the last 10 days, like we have been discussing for the last one hour and 10 minutes. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Yes. May I try this? Yes, sir. Answer? Yeah, Yes, please. Thank you, sir. I have completed my graduation in 2010. This action has already taken place. Still, it is expressed in present perfect tense. So I think a have will change into had. I had completed my graduation in 2010. So may I? Yeah, please. So may I? Yes. yes. So it will be, I have ahead. completed graduation. I have completed graduation instead of my graduation in 2000. I had, I had completed. Have will change so, into yeah. had. Yeah, go ahead, please. 
सर आई सर लाइक आई कंप्लीटेड माय ग्रेजुएशन इन 2010 बिकॉज़ द एक्शन है हैज ऑलरेडी कंप्लीटेड इन 2010 यस सर इट्स अ लॉन्ग लॉन्ग बैक आई टू दैट ग्रेजुएशन इन 2010 प्लीज वन पर्सन एट अ टाइम प्लीज वन पर्सन एट अ टाइम ओके हिरेन सर ऑलरेडी सेड इट लेट अस हियर सर्स कमेंट ऑन दैट हिरेन सर I completed my graduation in 2010. Yeah. Uh, any any other responses, sir? Uh, Shinda, ma'am, can I? Ha, yeah, please. Uh, sir, I think uh, uh, graduation is not a right word. So, as as per my knowledge, a graduation is a single event. So people complete their education. So, can we write education instead of graduation? But then, I completed. <laughs> okay. I completed my education in twenty two thousand ten. Okay, fine. Uh, what's your name? Uh, Pinkal Desai. Pinkal. Yeah, you can eat ice cream after the session is over <laughs> on your own. Uh, the point is, in this sentence, there are many things to discuss, and I'm I'm happy that uh, participants are taking so much of you know interest in this activity, because sometimes in some schools people think that so what. क्या फर्क पड़ता है नाउ दैट इज समथिंग वेरी इरिटेटिंग बट आई एम सो हैप्पी टुडे दैट इवन एट दिस ऑट टाइम आफ्टर लंच एंड दैट टू आफ्टर टू हैवी सेशंस यू आर स्टिल एक्टिवली टेकिंग पार्ट इन दिस एक्टिविटी सो आई एम सो हैप्पी नाउ नंबर वन नंबर वन हैड इज यूज इन इंग्लिश ओनली वेन यू हैव टू एक्शंस इन द पास and you want to talk about the first action as simple as that so had for one and sentence is never possible for one action is never possible for example if i say i had gone to mumbai that is not possible you must say i had gone to mumbai before i went to baroda that's fine so had means past of past double past so had is out of the question now number 2 number 2 as pinkal rightly mentioned the word graduation is used in some fixed contexts number 1 there is a program in universities and colleges where they award degrees to students at the end of their education so that ceremony is called graduation ceremony and at that time sometimes there is a special guest who gives a graduation speech in that context the word graduation is used another context for example if you are a science student and if you have worked in a laboratory you might know that there are some glass beakers with some markings on them 5 ml 10 ml 15 ml so those markings are called graduations so that is a graduated glass or a graduated beaker right so in our context we use the verb graduate here so we can say i graduated from xyz university in 2010 is that clear yes sir yes sir, yes, sir. So that means the word graduation is not used with finish or complete right we don't use that now uh, if you go to our website fluentlingua.com and search uh, if you go to learn section can you see on my screen in fact right now i am using my website even for this uh, what is it called do you call it a seminar or a workshop what do you call it so as session? it is going it's a workshop sir okay yeah <laughs> because you are working on it sir okay so in this workshop i am using my website so in our on our website we have read see listen watch test and study section right now i am using this study section for presentations but if you go to read section and search uh, talking about qualifications and degrees and you will get to know so many ways in which we can talk about our qualifications and degrees a very simple sentence like i am a bcom 
it is so important. I am a BCom. That's it. Fine. I am a BA. I am an MA. I am an MSc. Now these are universally used sentences, but our students sometimes they complicate simple things. So we have to teach them that use this. I am an MA. Fine. I am a BCom. I am an arts graduate. I am a science graduate. I am a commerce graduate. So whatever ways are available in the English language, I have made a small list of sentences which you can check later on on our website. So uh, the sentence is I graduated from. You can add the name of a college or university and then in a particular year. OK, eighth one. Sir, yes, Rosalind, ma'am. Oh, yes, sorry, sorry. Yeah, Rosalind, ma'am, has raised her hand. I could change this sentence in two ways. I could say I am good at English, or I can say I am fluent in English. So, I thought one way I can change the preposition in into at, or I, I or we could uh, change the word good into fluent. So I thought if if I were given this, I could have uh, uh, changed the sentence in both the ways. OK, I agree with your first answer. Because good is always followed by at when you're talking about skills. So if somebody says I'm good in English, that means he is not good at English, right? So good is followed by at. And if you change it, if you change the word fluent, then it will have a different sentence. It will have a different meaning. So let's just stick to good at. Fine. Because there are so many people who are good at English, but they are not fluent users of English. You'll be surprised to find uh, I conducted a workshop in Kim. If you know Kim Kosamba. Yes, sir. Yeah, so I conducted a workshop in Kim and there was a, uh, a person in his uh, 50s a, a very senior teacher of English. And that person had amazing command of English, amazing, far better than many even professors of English. But he was not able to speak the way it should be spoken. So his English was extremely good. He must have actually spotted quite a few errors in my English. But his speech was not fluent. So fluency is a totally different concept. Anyway, good. Fine. Now uh, with this background, we will take uh, next eight sentences very quickly and then we'll move to the third topic for today. The first was pronunciation. The second is grammar and the third we are going to discuss vocabulary. Right, so let's do the second part of this activity very quickly so that we have some time for. Vocabulary. OK, can you see on your screen number 9 to 16? Yes, sir. I give you five minutes and we will not discuss these sentences in detail, but I'll just tell you what is what in brief. Your time starts now.
Okay. Do you need some time? I think in, I think we can discuss the answers, friends. Shall we? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes, yes, Shimna. Yes. So uh, you can raise your hand and then Simna will decide who to who will speak. Yeah. Your friends, please raise your hands quickly. You go with the first, the ninth one. Any responses? Uh, we have Neetu, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I hope I'm audible. Yes, yes you are. If I'm there, I can help you. If I'm there, I would help you. Anyone else? Sir, I'll go for. Uh, sorry, uh, Shumna, I don't know how to raise hand. I'm no fine. Go ahead. No it's worries, it's go okay, ma'am. Absolutely fine. Yes, ma'am. So that's not with ahead. all these things. Uh, so uh, I'll go for like this that uh, if I'll be there, I would help you. I don't know. I'm not sure that if it's okay. correct. Anyone right? else? Uh, sir, may I? Yes, sir. Yeah, may, if I'm there, I will help you. Okay. Yes. If if I would have been there, I would have helped you. Sir, may I? Sir yeah. Shalini, sir. Yeah. If I were there, I would help you. Shalini, congratulations. Uh, Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah, I were there. Right. Okay. Now, uh, I you know, I will take plural verb. No, no, no. That's that's not the point. If I was, is also possible. If I was there, if I were there both are possible the point is there are three types of conditions and i would after listening to all your responses i strongly recommend that you watch the video which i have uploaded on my website for conditional sentences now there are three types of conditions one is a real which is called probable second is unreal which is just spoken for the sake of speaking which is never ever going to happen and the third is impossible which is about the past time now in english these three types of conditions have fixed structures and the first type which is real condition the pattern which is used here is for real condition but if you if you are here how can you say if i am there it is not possible Right. If you say if I am there, that means who is this person? A ghost. So logically, this sentence is impossible. So we have to use the past tense forms, and past tense forms here indicate imaginary situation. So if I was there, I could help you, but I am here, so I cannot help you. That is the message. For example, if you have seen the titles of some of the essays, if I was a dog, if I were a millionaire. Right. If I was the prime minister, even in interviews, suppose there is a local politician. The journalist asks a question. What would you do if you were the prime minister? For example, I can ask you right now, what would you do if you were the principal of this school? So what would you do if you were is an imaginary situation? Right. And with if in the if part, we don't use generally will or would or could. If I would, if I will, they are not possible in English, usually in conditional sentences. OK, so if I was there, I could help you or if I were there, I could help you. They both are possible was and were. They do not make any difference in imaginary situations. The only difference is that 
if you say was it is informal and if you use were it is formal official so formality differs otherwise they both are acceptable okay if you want detailed information about uh, conditional sentences you can refer to our website and i do you want me to show it to you on the screen for a second those three types of conditions Yes, sir, that would be helpful. Sir. Yes, sir. OK, just a minute. That's the advantage of using. Uh, this type of. Software. Yes. I hope you can see my screen. Yes, sir. Yeah. OK, so the first type of condition has this pattern where we use the simple present tense. So when you have the simple present tense with if, that means it is likely to happen in the present or in the future it is possible it may happen right so if he runs fast he will win the race possible fine and when you have type 2 it is improbable something which is not likely to happen it is only in the mind it is imaginary and it is different from what words actually convey so suppose there is a person who is extremely lazy. Then you can say this. If he worked hard, he would pass, but I know that he is very lazy. He has never worked hard, so I know he is not going to pass the test. And I am. 100% sure that you have heard a sentence like this. If I was a bird, I could fly, but I'm not a bird. Does it make sense now? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. And the third. Mm -hmm. Yes, please. Somebody is asking. Yes, sir. Uh, we yeah. can. Uh, uh, prepare. We can make a conditional statement. Use model auxiliary in perfect form. That is coming in the third type. OK, sir. That is type three, which is the only type for the past time situation. And something that happened in the past, you cannot change. That's why it is called the impossible type. And there the pattern is very much fixed. Had plus past participle in the condition. And could, would or might plus have plus past participle in the result part. For example, if you had helped me, I would have helped you. If Sachin had played well, India could have won the match or would have won the match or might have won the match, depending on the context. <coughs> so, is that clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If you want, I can send you this file and there is a video also on this topic, so you might like to refer to that video. Yeah, lovely. Now coming back to our sentences. OK, number 10. Uh, number 10, hmm. anyone? We provide them with everything, sir. Perfect. Now 11. 11th. Uh, is there anyone raising hand? Neetu, ma'am. Would you like to go for the 11th one? By the way, uh, in the 10th I one, provide somebody with something is a pattern. So I just wanted to highlight that certain verbs have certain fixed patterns. We have to just accept them. Yes. So here the pattern is provide somebody with something. So we provide them with everything. OK, next eleven. The inner Same train way. instead of on a train, it should be in a train. In a train. Now, now before you uh, think further, let me tell you that this is a perfectly acceptable sentence in English 
And uh, by the way, for all public transport, on is a preferred uh, preposition on a train, on a bus, on a plane, on a ship. What do you do when you are on a train? I generally read when I am on a train. Right? I prefer to sit by the window when I am on a plane. So on a train, on a plane, on a ship, they are very common in English, right? So that's not a problem. Eleventh is perfectly okay. And and no sir, may I please ask something? Yes, please, please. Suppose uh, suppose if we write, I was in a train. So was yes. it wrong? Will it become wrong? See, uh, in fact, after this slide, we are going to discuss this point about mm -hmm. appropriateness. So okay. in these days, these days, even my gurus, they always uh, tell me, don't say something is correct or incorrect. Just say something is more common, something is less common. Because language is always in a state of flux, right? Today, something may be incorrect, tomorrow it might become correct, right? And who decides correctness ultimately, right? That is another area. So it is better to go by the frequency. What is most common in the community where this is the first language? So in a train is also possible when you are talking about where is something it is in the train. So when you are talking about in the classroom, in the house, in that situation. But here when you say I was on a train when you called me, that means I was traveling in that sense. I hope you get the mm -hmm. point. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Yes. Thank you, sir. The twelfth one. Shall we go ahead, sir? Yes, please. Yeah, twelfth one. Anybody? Sir, we work in ten to five. We work from ten to five. Okay. Now I'm sure you have seen there are two possibilities. One is from yes, between ten and to and five. And not in. From 10 to 5, that is one possibility. And grammatically, another possibility is between 10 between and, 10 five. and 5. Yes, sir. Between is always followed by and. Yes. But the meanings will be different. When you say from 10 to 5, that means you are talking about the total period starting from 10 and finishing at 5, total period. Whereas when you say between 10 and 5, then you might work for say half an hour between 10 and 5, maybe one hour between 10 and 5. You get the point? Sir, may I try yes. the 13th one? Yes, please. Uh, I think in the 13th one, uh, article A is missing. A little knowledge is a dangerous thing. Very good. Now, why a little? Because it is a proverb. And grammatically also you can prove that little is not possible here. Yes. Little means almost none. There is little milk in the fridge, so we will have to go and buy. So little has a negative meaning and a little means some. A little means some. For example, I have a little milk if you want. If there is a guest, you can make a cup of tea. If there are two guests, you can add some water and you can continue, you can run the show. So a little is positive, some. Now in this proverb, the meaning is, if you don't have any knowledge, then it is not dangerous because you will call somebody and that person will do the work. But suppose you have some knowledge, then you will create more problems. So a little knowledge is a dangerous thing. I would also like to uh, try number 14. Please. Today morning, I did two mistakes. I think instead of did, we can write com uh, today morning, I committed two mistakes. Today morning, I made two mistakes. Committed mistakes. Uh, today in the morning, I committed two mistakes. Anyone else? Uh, today morning, I made two mistakes. Anyone else? Any other response? Um, okay, fine. 
or now, I committed two mistakes today. Today I committed two mistakes. I think with mistakes, uh, uh, committed words should come. Okay, now uh, uh, may I say please, in a different please, please. Way. please, please. I made or I committed two mistakes in the morning today. Uh, can you repeat that, please? Uh, I committed or I made two mistakes in the morning today. Okay, now a couple of things. Number one, as some of you rightly pointed out, do and mistake are not friends. This topic is actually in our vocabulary section, collocation. Collocation means word partnership. Certain words, they go with certain fixed words only. For example, quick and fast, they are synonyms, right? But if there is a restaurant, will you say a quick restaurant or a fast restaurant, a quick res food restaurant or a fast food restaurant? Fast food. Fast food, right? So certain word, if I say Amitabh is a high man, will you accept that? No. Honorable Amitabh man. is a tall man, if you are talking about the height. So in English, certain words, they go with certain fixed words only. That feature is called collocation. So according to collocation, do and mistake are not friends. Make and mistake our friends. So one uh, possible correction or one part of the correction is I made two mistakes. And commit is usually used with sin and error. OK. Now that is a part of the sentence. But another part which is probably more interesting is in English we don't use today morning. I'm sure you have heard something else, not today morning. What do you say? What have you today heard? Today in the morning. Today in the morning. Today in the morning is possible, but suppose in place of today, if I ask you to use some other word, what word will you use? Early morning. Early, Early morning. Another word. This morning. Exactly. This, this morning. morning. So in English, we say this morning, this evening, this afternoon. We don't say today morning or today evening. This evening, this afternoon, right? This morning, I met a friend. OK, now this is nothing like right or wrong in English, but this is more like a convention. This is the way native speakers of English use. So we just try to follow. OK, the next one. My employer is elder to me. Uh, anyone would like to answer? Yes. My yes, employer is older than me. Senior and older to me. Elder is generally with the near and dear ones, and they're uh, older with their somebody we, whom we know. Formal. So the whole sentence will be? My employer is older than me. OK. So. Uh, Elder is used only before a noun. For example, he is my elder brother. She is my elder sister. That's it. Elder is never used to compare ages. So when you want to compare ages, you require older than or younger than. Right? So in this case, my employer is older than me. And last one, the, the 16th one. Uh, I yeah, think sir, will not come. Yeah, anybody? Oh. I see. Oh, sorry. Sir, I think in place I, I of will not, want, will come. Come. want. He won't come. May. No, may. may no, not. simple. Yes, simple. I please. think he may not come. He, I think he wouldn't come. Or I think uh, he does he not come. I think he won't come. I'll go for I feel he won't come. OK, I think. OK, fine. Now 
again the point is instead of saying right or wrong this point is about convention and when i tell you the answer immediately you will say yes this is the way i use it now whenever you want to convey any negative sentence may not come and if you have two parts in a sentence then it is always the first part which is converted into a negative form not the second part so i don't think he will come i don't think india will win the match i don't think he will help us i'm sure you heard more sentences with i don't think yes sir yes right, sir yeah. right sir right, right. Sir. yeah this is the way right sir right yeah. anyway very true yes. sir <clears throat> now uh, so we have discussed pronunciation just uh, we have touched actually we have not discussed in detail we have touched uh, grammatical accuracy there are more than a thousand sentences in my collection for this particular topic uh, but 18 16 should be enough because i am not interested in teaching these points i am interested in making you aware of the finer aspects of language which you can enjoy first enjoy learning and then enjoy teaching right uh the next point uh about the appropriateness we already discussed actually that certain things may be accurate but they may not be appropriate so this appropriateness and this entire field of communicative language teaching you know communicative language teaching clt yes sir yeah so there is a huge body of literature for communicative language teaching in fact today for any language in the world authentic courses are designed using clt communicative language teaching now this whole communicative language teaching movement started with a small uh, conference research paper in 1972 in 1972 del himes one of the i wouldn't call him a very great scholar or a researcher but he just presented a paper at a small conference and from that one paper the whole field of english language teaching not just english the whole field of language teaching changed and he gave four tenets or four principles he said that when you say you know a language what do you actually know or what should you know for example if i say i know gujarati that means i have four types of knowledge and similarly when you say you want to teach some language to somebody that means you have to give that person four types of knowledge number 1 whether something is possible in that language or not for example i cricket play is it possible in english no sir no sir no. No, so sir. your knowledge of english will tell you that i play cricket is possible i cricket play or cricket i play is not possible so that knowledge you have that is a part of communicative competence second is whether it is feasible certain sentences may be grammatically acceptable they may be possible in a language but they are not feasible people will not understand when you speak them a classic example of this uh, if you have heard that nursery rhyme this is the house that jack built does anyone know that rhyme am i audible Yes sir yes sir you are yeah yes. so can i collect the rhyme sir there is a wonderful yeah, rhyme sir yeah you have already uh, heard or maybe taught also now in that there is a series of that clauses this is the house that jack built this is the house that this 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 and then that you know it's a long sentence so grammatically it is possible but i am sure when you make a sentence like this nobody will understand so it is not feasible 
So that knowledge is also part of communicative competence. Third type of knowledge is whether something that you speak or write is appropriate in a particular context. For example, you are on a bus or on a plane or on a train. You are walking in the aisle and suppose your leg touches somebody. And then you say sorry. So your tone here is not appropriate. Right? Suppose you uh, you go to your principal's cabin and say, I want information about my classes tomorrow. So that is language wise possible. It is feasible also. The other person has understood, but it is not appropriate in a context. So that knowledge is also part of communicative competence. And the fourth part of knowledge is whether something is actually in use in that speech community. So certain things may be possible, feasible and appropriate also, but it is not in use. Native speakers of that language, they don't use it. So as a language user, you should have these four kinds of knowledge. And as a language teacher, you have to tell your learners these four kinds of you know details. Then that person will have communicative competence, not just linguistic competence. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Yes, yeah. sir. And yes, sir. I, yes, sir. And I would strongly recommend reading this particular uh, research paper on communicative competence. It's a, you can Google it very easily. Right. Then. <clears throat> so all this is available on your website, sir? Yes, actually, if you see there are how many slides? <laughs> there are more than 60 slides, 80 slides maybe, but we will discuss only hardly 10. That is what normally happens. Yeah, I always keep more things ready than required. So uh, the point is here. Fluency is a result. Many people ask me, how can I work on my fluency? Then I say fluency is a result of your work on your grammar, on your pronunciation, on your vocabulary. When you have mastered all these things, then only you can be a fluent user of language. I'm sure you will agree with this common sense rule. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And another thing. Uh, Some people, I don't know whether you have come across such people. There are some people who have enough grammar, enough vocabulary, enough even confidence, but still they are not able to speak fluently. And for them, we can recommend some activities like tongue twisters and mouth gymnastics. Means Indian learners of English they usually they do, they do not use their mouth in totality. Very often they don't even open their mouth. And if they don't open their mouth properly, clarity will never be there. Right? Fluency is impossible. So fluency with clarity, if that is the goal, then we have to train them in mouth gymnastics, means making various kinds of movements with mouth, lips exercises, jaw exercises, right? And there are quite a few rules uh, to improve fluency or I would say practice activities. One of them I will give you today. Just one of them. And that secret source. Is in this particular slide. Can anyone tell me what rule I'm trying to uh, draw your attention to? Uh, in fact, we don't have much time, so I will have to tell you directly. One of the key rules of English fluency is. Whenever there is a vowel sound at the beginning of a word. 
please listen to me carefully because this rule is not written in any book this is just a practical rule that my uh, teacher dr richard cordwell has given me from birmingham university so whenever yeah please so will you just speak slowly so we can write in our note no need to you will understand it i am no, damn okay, sure about sir. it okay. yeah the Please. session is recorded ma'am i will forward the recording don't worry okay thank you thank you ma'am yeah so the rule is whenever there is a vowel sound i am talking about vowel sounds not letters vowel letters are 5 a e i o u and vowel sounds are 20 okay so whenever there is a vowel sound at the beginning of a word it will always marry the previous sound that means the last sound of the previous word and that marriage in any marriage there are two parties so here this vowel is a strong party stronger than the other one so this vowel sound at the beginning will drag the previous sound so if you see the first sentence the first vowel sound is in the word at right and the second uh, vowel sound is in all so at has a which is a vowel sound and vowel sounds are very strong so they will drag the previous sound so the previous sound is here t so from not t will be dragged out and it will marry a so it will become no ta no because t has gone so it has become no and t has gone to that a sound so it will become ta and from at also t will go and that t will go with the next sound o which is a vowel sound so when you listen to any native speaker speaking in a normal natural not just native speakers but any fluent speaker of english this happens no at all so if you speak not at all you are actually speaking no at all do you get the point yes sir yes sir similarly in the next sentence i got up at 8 so when you say got up at 8 so you are actually speaking go ta pa te and many students if they cannot speak fluently you can try just 15 or 20 sentences like this and he will pick up fluency i got up at 8 in the next sentence his has z at the end and older has o at, at the beginning a vowel sound so it will become he is older he is older he is older he is older right in the last sentence wa what will become wa and t will go with n so tan and that n will go with idea so what an idea what an idea what an idea right i think i have spoken a lot uh but i hope it is in some way useful there is so much actually two hours are not enough yes it is yeah <laughs> so uh i think i will i i must stop presenting now and i should give you a chance to how can i stop presenting mm, you can just see. click on the share button it will stop it will automatically stop sir where is the share button so one arrow one arrow there on the top mm -hmm. you can close this sir if you close this uh, we'll come to your desktop i guess I'm a little worried because if I okay, stop sharing. Quite got got it, got it. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Yes. Now the platform is open for any comments, suggestions, feedback. Sir, today we became students. Yes, sir. Unfortunately, <laughs> sir, the session After has come to an end. After a long time, and we enjoyed a lot. We enjoyed a lot. Yes. We actually felt that okay, we are there. in the classroom class. and a teacher especially like you know that paper 10
when especially when we were looking forward when we were doing ba yeah, we used to look forward for our professor and used to you know <laughs> uh, always look like how the person will pronounce and how he'll make us uh, um, utter those words so today i think it's long back so <laughs> thank little you little friends <laughs> apprehensive about giving wrong answers sir we were like little worried being yeah, english teachers we cannot be wrong but then it's okay i think at times we can also go we may also go wrong and it's good that we go wrong and we get to know that we are wrong so that we correct ourselves uh, this is a time to correct ourselves very true so yeah. it was something very nostalgic <laughs> something very nostalgic this was going back to classroom back to our good old days the school days yes. really the yes. trust trust us and sir and so sound and is shimla ma'am Yes, we didn't come to know that these two hours. How did it like? Yes, it yes. Just absolutely. actually, and sir, sir is sir sound is like uh, how when we search some any word on Google, and uh, when we uh, tap on that speaker, and what pronunciation yes. exactly they speak? Exactly, sir is speaking like that. Like I feel that oh, is it the sir voice where Google? <laughs> <laughs> exactly the same just... pronunciation. That's our dance teacher Sajni saying this. <laughs> okay. Right. So uh, thank you very much for your kind yes. comments. Sir, and, uh, we I... have our principal uh, sir. Actually, sir. Wow. So you are very engaging presenter, sir. We enjoyed thank a lot. You. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, dear friends, uh, uh, and sir, we have our principal sir joined us. Uh, sir, are you there with us, sir? Yes, yes. Anthony, yes, sir. Yes. Ah uh, yes, ma'am. Good yes, evening, Shrinna, ma'am. Welcome, you, sir. Welcome, you, sir. Ah, uh, good evening, Doctor Dharmendra Shet. Uh, I have been listening to your address, and the topic that you covered is fantastic. Ah, uh, I strongly recommend ah uh, this kind of program should be available for all the staff members, not only for the English ah uh, teachers. I would like to make an appeal to you today. Uh, if time permits, we can have you. Uh, again and again for the benefit of school teachers uh, right from class uh, kg to 12 standard so this is my humble appeal to you at this platform so i would like to request uh, shimna ma'am uh, to make a request to sir so that we can make use of his expertise uh, for all the staff members it's a wonderful session sir uh, we learned a lot from your session and i really appreciate your presentation and presentability these are the two key words i have observed during your presentation you are very very simple in your approach and this is the power of uh, english people and when i say english people the people those who love uh, speaking english and teach english to the other children or the staff members so i have high regards for your presentation i loved your Thank presentability you so Yeah, I loved your presentability, sir. And we are looking forward to witnessing some more sessions for the entire staff members of our school. Thank you so much, sir, for having accepted our invitation. Fantastic orientation program, awareness program for all the English teachers, and looking forward to witnessing some more sessions on general English. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Anthony, sir. Uh, sir, our Anthony, sir, is a live uh, encyclopedia of English. So we learn a lot from him. And today, sir, you also have added a lot uh, to this entire ocean of English. Uh, definitely, it's an ocean, and we are just a tiny drop in it. So. Um, any more uh, comments any more responses hiren sir yes hiren sir was very active today so hiren sir is here generally uh, truly speaking generally i sleep in every uh, <laughs> very <afternoon>. honest <laughs> brutally honest <laughs> brutally honest actually sir dharmendra sir i would like to tell my experience in 2003 i was studying in bed college vt choksi and doc, dr sudhakar marathe uh, took a very wonderful uh, workshop of there and uh, that came to my mind today sir yeah. he was my guru yes sir 
and the i personally felt the biggest uh, headache of english language is prepositions sir <laughs> right we generally we'll say we cannot teach prepositions you have to catch it so <laughs> we keep catching it as in when we hear it yes sir right preposition change meaning change yes yeah pinkal ma'am over to you Uh, you raised your hand okay maybe my, maybe my miss by mistake yes ma'am uh, sorry sorry yeah excuse me sorry uh really it was a wonderful session sir and we learned a lot today and uh, we enjoyed as a student with you uh, before that uh, i would like to extend my heartiest uh, thanks to our uh, respected principal sir sir whatever i am today only because of him and he gave me so much support and inspiration so uh, today whatever i am speaking in front of all these people because of him sir so thank you so much uh, anthony sir to give me this much support so i could travel this uh, this so far here thank you sir yeah thank you pingal ma'am uh, dr dharmendra sir Uh, Mrs. Pingal Desai was working in Gujarati medium. Uh, we have a counter medium, Gujarati medium, uh, functioning in the afternoon. So she was working for Gujarati medium many years, and there was an opportunity uh, in English medium. So we transferred her from Gujarati medium to English medium, and it was a total transit. You know how I, I don't want to you know make a comment on this. Uh, it would be a kind of a hurt for uh, gujarati speaking people so uh, her accent and her pronunciation uh, were not up to the mark you uh, know when she came to english medium she had to learn a lot and we have created the atmosphere in english medium so the atmosphere made her correct herself not because of uh, me as principal because of the atmosphere a spoken english atmosphere prevailing in our school made her improve her speaking skill in english so thanks to good english medium <laughs> not to the principal uh, thank you pingal ma'am for uh, respecting me thank, thank you congrats, thank you so congratulations, much congratulations pingal <laughs> and by, by the way on the same note uh, let me make it clear that i spoke my first sentence in english at the age of 23 I was a student of Pakka Surti Medium, not even Gujarati. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but it's interesting, definitely. Yeah. So, uh, with sir's permission, shall we uh, call it a day? Thank you. Yes. Uh, yes. So, I, so I would like to speak something. Yeah, please. please if you can, please, ma'am. Uh, if you permit, uh, like. Uh, please yes. please stay is always like uh, sir actually uh, not a formal vote of thanks but i just wanted to say sir please hello ma'am uh, ma'am please unmute yourself so there's yeah, no ma'am yeah yeah you have gone uh, now am i audible yes yeah, yes sure sir. please continue okay okay Uh, good evening everyone sir it's not a formal vote of thanks certainly not but uh, you know i have heard that it is said he who kneels the most stands the best this is this line appears to be one of the best suited one for our today's guest dr dharmin shit sir we are indeed touched by not only by your knowledge by your pronunciation as some of our teachers mentioned but your humility and the way you guided us uh, with the pronunciation giving proper stress on each syllable so it was really nostalgic you took us back to our those convent days when the uh, mother superior or sister principal will come or sometime she will ask anyone to get up and you speak and uh, they are very kind very you know 
like our principal sir a very kind not like me certainly like our principal sir very softly they will correct you so that way so you it was sincerely very nostalgic thank you so much uh, at, and sir it was a very good learning also certainly it was a very good learning uh, the grammar section sir was really enriching i think all of us will agree that uh, we actively not only we actively took part in it but uh, we got our doubts also clear and uh, sir as you mentioned that first we must enjoy learning then we will we would enjoy teaching and sir believe us that we have noted down many of your sentences okay. and many of your st our students will go and tell you that is yes this teacher was using and of course we will take your name <laughs> so thank you very much sir My and pleasure. look forward for many more such sessions with you as our principal sir uh, shimna ma'am all are promising that we will have such session with you we we'll look forward to that thank you very much sir thank it you it was indeed a good learning thank you yes uh, sudarshna ma'am you are absolutely right and yes, i i learn from uh, dr dhamendra shet you know the more you become scholarly the more you become humble this is the lesson that i have learned from sir very humble down to earth very very presentable whenever teachers made mistake english teachers made mistake in in, in following the sentences sir did not make any comment on that instead he was teaching them he did not say that you are wrong that shows he is very scholarly so he is very humble so big salute to you sir and i belong to your community so i have also learned a lot from your session i left other sessions sir uh, simultaneously we have on uh, science uh, mathematics social science i left all the other sessions i joined your session because i i learned a lot from your session thank so you so on behalf of english department i would like to register my heartfelt gratitude to you sir so thank you so much and looking forward to your sessions for the more thank you thank you so as all good things come to an end so is same is this moment and the session thank you so much sir for being here for taking your time for enriching all of us it's not just mere words it's from our heart from the bottom of our heart sir we look forward really really it's not just like generally before every speaker we say we look forward we look forward but this is genuine sir we genuinely look forward for more sessions with you so that we keep learning and we keep enriching ourselves so thank you so much sir have a wonderful thank evening thank you thank you bye have a nice time yeah. bye sir bye sir yeah. have a thank wonderful thank you thank you thank you everyone thank you sir thank you for joining us thank you sir bye sir thank you thank you thank you sir thank you sir thank you sir thank you sir thanks a lot thank you everyone for your active participation thank you sir uh shimna ma'am yes sir uh sir is from which college ma'am sir he is uh, not from a college he runs an organization sir which okay. uh, which is fluent lingua uh, which is okay. Uh, okay. Okay. which is a, a language uh, learning center uh is he available in surat or some yes, other sir, city it, it's it's a surat only sir it's a language That's training right. and research center so we need to ma'am we need to invite him uh, offline not for yes. online classes yes sir yes we sir, need sure. to invite him offline for the entire staff members sure sir sure so, sir it, it was really yeah. sir yes 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 it's the need of the hour sir, for the entire staff something? members not not only for uh, english yes. teachers everyone yeah Yeah, right from KG to twelve. Sir, may standard. I suggest? Yeah, sure, ma'am. Uh, sir, uh, if like you know, every month when we have this fourth Saturday uh, kept for the subject teachers meeting or the yes, yes, during yeah. that time, sir, if we uh, like you know, uh, like uh, oh, every time, every uh, the month, if we keep calling and if he keeps giving training, sir, uh, I think all these uh, like you know pronunciation part, uh, like fluency, appropriacy, everything will be taken care of, sir. I think like you know, uh, teachers uh, themselves will be rejuvenated. Uh, not, not only for uh, English department. My concern is for the entire staff members. 
Definitely. Otherwise, only English teachers will learn from him. What about <laughs> other subject teachers? <laughs> so he seems to be excellent in uh, you know uh, training this uh, spoken yeah. English and other you know grammar and pronunciation. So we should make use of for the entire staff members. <laughs> yes, sir. And one session from you also, sir. We need. Yes, yeah, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> no, I I'll be focusing on emotional quotient. <laughs> so, we need some like communication skills. Sir, you were talking on the other day. You were talking about uh, the CPD and CP uh, CPU. Ah, yes, yes, But, yes. But sir, we pointed on communication skills because that's what uh, we look at. Uh -huh, yes, 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 ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So uh, we have we have time. We have time to cover all this. Uh, you know, uh, syllabus. We yes, will sir. do it. Yeah. Yes, sure, sir. Thank you so much, sir, for joining us, sir. Thank you, thank you, ma'am. All so the best. So may I please? So may I please? Yeah, yes, ma'am. Sudarshana, ma'am. So, uh, like I always say that. Uh, so, and when we were young, uh, like in convent schools, uh, mother superior or sister, like all the teachers, they were yes. like you only, sir. <laughs> they were then, of course, they were very strict. Now also, they are they are disciplined. <laughs> they are known for their discipline, but sir, they are like you. They never raised their voice, yes. and uh, really, <laughs> and it's the same thing was there with sir. It was sincerely very inspiring, enriching yes, for a person like me. It was sincerely, it was like that, sir. So, yes, ma'am. Look, I, I am a seminary product, ma'am. Uh, in <laughs> fact, I wanted to become a Catholic priest. I yes. joined the seminary after completing 10th standard. Uh, I was in the seminary for almost uh, nine years, ma'am. My God. Yeah, I had successfully completed a diploma in theology. Okay. You know, so after completing my theology, I did my deaconhood for a couple of years, and then I left seminary. So, you know, sarcastically, I used to say I wanted to become father of the church, but I am father of now. I am father of many children. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes. Sir. yes. That's correct. The blessing in disguise, we we got you, ah, sir. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yes yeah, sir. Thanks, sir. It is their loss and our gain. Yes. <laughs> sir, I, I, yeah. I, I, sh I should have become a good priest, ma'am. <laughs> no, sir. It's but, their yeah, loss. You are the human best day. principle. Uh, yeah, yeah, nice, he is a nice very good human being. There is no doubt. <laughs> yes. Sir, I often say you are the face of the school and it's really presentable. It's yeah, really you, so. You, Turan always say, "Ma'am, please send us to principal, sir." <laughs> <laughs> Ma'am, instead of you scolding us, please send us to sir. <laughs> sir. So they really love you, sir. Really, yeah, thank you. you. Thank They're you. Very comfortable also. in your presence. Yeah, thank you, ma'am. Thank you. So thank you all. So all sir, the best for tomorrow. Dikra, yeah, thank you, thank you uh, so much. Small thing, Shimna, ma'am, a um, kind, uh, a gentle reminder. I hope you have downloaded the. Yes, uh, I have attendance. downloaded and I have recorded also. And I don't know if uh, this chat box is. Um, uh,